Hello friends, welcome back. Hope you're doing well. Today I'm in Luminar Neo. I'm going to be talking about the color balance tool. It is, I think, by far the most powerful color editing, color management, color manipulation, maybe that's the word. The, but anyway, the best tool for adjusting colors in Luminar Neo. It's really powerful. It's really flexible. And I wanted to walk through because I've had some questions about it recently. It's a tool that I use a lot, but there's some things I've learned over time, some kind of best practices. And I want to walk through kind of how I use it demo of course how it works and then also just kind of talk about what kind of scenes you could use it on and what kind of scenes i do use it on uh, let's just go ahead and get started i've got an image here this is a sunset and by the way that's one of the key types of photos that i use it on anything that's shot at the edges of the day that would be like a you know sunset sunrise golden hour twilight any of that where i'm kind of moving the colors around and i'm looking for a better you know balance um, of the color and that's really what color balance does i think so well so we're going to walk through that and this is going to be kind of a instructional class master class i don't know if you want to call it that but a bit of a deep dive into color harmony excuse me into color balance which is in color harmony and by the way you'll notice it's in my favorites it used to reside down in professional if i remember correctly but when you fave it it st uh, stays up here in your favorites and it's up there because i use it all the time to get started if you look at color balance there's basically two different sections there's this drop down menu which is shadows midtones or highlights that's the tonal area that you'll be adjusting the colors in you get to pick them separately which is why it's so powerful it gives you control in each tonal area over the colors which is honestly just amazing and then you've got these different sliders for the different color let's call them channels for lack of a better word cyan and red magenta green yellow and blue by the way you'll find similar things that you can do in the curves tool if you would like a curves tutorial i haven't talked about that in a lot of uh, in a while leave me a comment down below i also wanted to point out that if you're looking at this uh these sliders and these colors you'll recognize them perhaps not just from curves but also from the color wheel colors that sit, ac sit across from each other are complementary so Blue and yellow are complementary. You'll see that down here. Magenta green slider. You can see magenta and green are across from each other. And red and cyan. And you can see those are complementary. Uh, and those sliders are over here. So it's just something to keep in mind. Some of the best practices around color balance for me are, number one, I tend to start with shadows. And, and it's really just because it's at the top of the list. But I also, I kind of like to set my shadows before I kind of do what I like to do with the highlights, which is the other area that I spend a fair amount of time in. Just just to be clear, this is not science. This is not a scientific follow this step and then do this and do that and your images look great every time. It's not like that at all. This is very much an art tool. Uh, it takes an artistic approach and it's really just season to taste, right? Do what you like, find the colors that work for you. In other words, experiment. There's not a formula that works every time. Every image is different, but I tend to start with shadows. For me, shadows uh, by definition are darker, and to me that means they're kind of bluer. Blue is kind of dark, or if you want to add some darkness to the shadows, the blue slider is a great way to do that. So it, you will see as I drag the blue here to the right, the shadows start to get darker. Another thing to think about here is you could do that at the beginning of your edit, even if you don't plan to use it, just to give you an idea of what it's considering shadows. You could also do something similar in highlights. Just drop down to highlights, move some sliders, see what's getting affected. If you're not really totally sure what all is going to be impacted. But I tend to do a little bit in the shadows. And by the way, um, that's a, a key thing is a little bit. Like a, a little bit goes a long way, especially if you're using multiple tools and multiple sliders. So my three best practices here are you don't always have to use all three three tonal areas. Sometimes it's just a little bit in one or two of them is enough. Um, the second, uh, second best practice here is that you don't have to use all three sliders in each of those tonal areas or in any of the tonal areas that you do make adjustments in. So you don't have to use every slider every time. And my third best practice is what I said a moment ago, which is a little bit really does go a long way. In fact, one of the things I wanna show you is that you can have a massive impact on a photo just moving some things around. And this is the power of color balance. Five different kind of quick edits I did, and I just took screenshots of these, but you can see there's one that's a bit bluer. There's one that's a bit magenta. This one's a little bit more pink and magenta. This one's very warm, very golden hour kind of looking. And this one's kind of down the middle, a little bit darker in the shadows, a little bit of pop of warmth in the highlights. But you can just see from the differences here 
that you can really have a huge impact on a photo. Uh, I just, again, I experiment, I come in here, and usually what I might would do is um, start with shadows, and I tend to maybe go just a little bit, just to give a little bit of that contrast, simply because I like to create difference in my photo, that contrast, the difference between the bright and the dark, and adding blue to the shadows helps. By the way, whenever I'm doing a cityscape shot, kind of at twilight, I will often add blue to the shadows with this tool to make it a little bit darker and a little bit cooler, because by definition, a shadow is darker, but also to me in my head, I think, well, if it's darker, it's a little bit cooler, especially if it's like a cityscape street scene, you expect those dark shadows to be kind of cool, like there's no light in them, therefore they're not warm, right? Light is brighter, brighter is warmer, dark is cooler to me, right? And this is kind of how my brain works. So I might would add a little bit there, and I don't know if I would mess with much else. Uh, I might would go into midtones. Now keep in mind, there's generally speaking a fair amount of midtones in any photo. Again, depending on what you're starting with. Generally speaking, let me show you this base photo again. That's the unedited photo without the shadow adjustment I did a moment ago. And you can see it's fairly flat, lacking contrast and things like that. So far, I've added a little bit of blue to the shadows, which made that a little bit darker. And what I want to do now is let's say accentuate that warm light, because again, I like that contrast not just in the light levels but also in the colors in my image cool and the warm playing off of each other so it's something I think about when I'm using color balance and especially if I have a sunset I want to kind of amp up some of that so knowing that there's a fair amount of midtones I might come in here and do a little bit of this warmth into the midtones and I might experiment with yellow and blue but I'll be honest uh, except for adding blue to shadows I don't always use yellow a whole lot I tend to like the magenta some folks don't really like the magenta tint totally get it this is all season to taste, take your artistic preferences and run with it. Uh, do whatever you feel is best to get the image that you like, because it's your photo and it needs to look the way you want it to look. I'm just talking about my own experiences, but those are all kind of um, governed by what I like, right? My preferences. So maybe a little bit of yellow, but for me, like when you start getting a lot of yellow, it kind of washes out and it gets away from the blue. And as you can see, to me, it starts to get a little bit of a green tint, which I don't really like. So that's one of the reasons I don't use a lot of yellow. But let's say I've got that. Maybe I'll do a ton tiny bit more red in the midtones. A sunset and the warm parts of a sunset is really the highlights. And so for highlights, I'm going to come in here. And again, I'm just going to experiment. I'm going to add a little bit more of that red. I do like adding the red. It gives a nice little pop there. Magenta, just be careful because if you go too far, you get a heavily magenta flavored kind of image. I'm going to do like a one or two, right? Or negative uh, one or two, well, negative three, it looks like in this case. And then I'm going to try a little bit of yellow. You'll see, by the way, that yellow is a, a lighter color than the blue. So when I'm going away from the blue and toward the yellow, the photo is getting brighter, right? So you'll notice that those, because there's a fair amount of highlights in the sunset, the photo overall is getting a bit brighter. Season to taste, just be careful and just play around with it to kind of see what you come up with. I like this tool so much because you get really accurate color control over all three tonal areas. So it's in many ways a better way to adjust the color temperature in your photo because color temp is going to be global, whereas this is going to help you kind of control those things in the individual tonal areas, right? Highlights, midtones, and shadows. And I also think it's quite often a better tool than split toning, depending on what you're trying to do. But split toning is just highlights or shadows, and then you pick a color and basically add that color. This one takes a little bit more finesse, but it also has three different tonal areas. It has the midtones, and you don't have that in split toning. So if you look at this photo overall, I went from that a bit cooler and that sort of thing to that, which is a little bit warmer. And you might say, well, I want a little bit more of a pop to the sunset, so you could go do a couple of other things here. The brilliance and warmth tools come in super handy, and although this is really about color balance, it pairs really well with the other tools in color harmony, of course, as you might expect. So if you want a little bit more intensity, that brilliance slider works great. And then warmth overall is a bit, uh, a bit of a nice add. You can see kind of what's happening there. The other thing to think about is split color warmth. You can take the warm colors and amp them up and you can kind of see what's happening. My sunset is getting more sunsetty. I do tend to use color balance in combination with other tools. It might be split tone, it might be color temp, it might be golden hour, but very often it's also split color warmth and the brilliance and warmth section right here in color harmony. So while this video is more specifically about color balance in a broader sense, just think about everything overall season to taste, take advantage of the different tools that are available in Luminar to get the color look or color balance that you want. Uh, and since I use these other tools here in the color harmony tool, I'm going to say get the color harmony that you want. It really does, putting all these together, it really does help you achieve an overall look that can look great on your images. That's my before. 
and that's my current state. Now another idea, of course, I use this on landscapes. Uh, I tend not to use color balance except for really kind of those edges of the day kind of light where I'm doing a little bit more color adjustment. When it's a bright day, bright light, that sort of thing, the colors are not as soft and moody and I tend not to adjust those colors quite as much. So like I said, I tend to use this tool more often on sun, sunset, sunrise, golden hour, twilight, blue hour, that kind of thing. I use it a lot on city scenes also at those same times of day. So lit, uh, landscapes and cityscapes on those times of day. Of course, I use it on sun, sunsets as I just talked about, but also another idea that might be useful is, let's say you have a texture and you really like the texture because of the, no pun intended, but the texture within the texture file, right? Like maybe you like the look of the stone or the rust or whatever it might be that your texture is, but it's the wrong color. Consider using color balance to come in and adjust the different tonal areas in the texture because what is the texture file? It's just a photo. It's just a photo of something that has a pattern or a texture to it, like stone or rock or rust or whatever it might be. But you could use color balance and the other color tools in Luminar as well to basically adjust the colors and shift the overall color look of your texture. So you might have a texture that you love, but you need it in different color patterns for different kinds of scenes, you can go and create that. So something to think about another use case for color balance. I would say overall, I mean, I started with that as a sunset, which is kind of flat. By the way, this was a raw file. No other edits were made to this photo. So I'm purely using uh, color harmony and the, and the tools here in color balance that I've been talking about. But that's what it started like, kind of a fading pastel colored sunset, a little bit heavier on the blue, a little bit less warmth, and now a bit more warmth, a bit more pop to the color. But I think honestly still very realistic, not overdone, not oversaturated. And yes, there are some other things I would probably go do to this photo, but I wanted to demo how I use color balance and walk through that, hopefully give you some ideas about how you can use it in your own edits. That's really it for this one, my friends. Hopefully this video gave you some ideas about what you can do. And if you did enjoy this video, check out that video as well. And then I'll be back really soon with more stuff. You guys take care. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon. And until then, adios.